As COVID-19's global impact mounts, so does the urgent need to stop its spread. A vaccine is what we need for life to get back to some sort of semblance of normality. The scientists are working as quickly as they can, but that's at least a year, a year and a half, two years away. In the meantime, scientists are trialling existing drugs to treat COVID-19. The coronavirus which causes COVID-19 was only identified in January this year. A mysterious pneumonia outbreak in China has been identified. It's from the same family that caused the deadly SARS epidemic 17 years ago. But scientists have known about coronaviruses since the 1960s, giving them a head start in understanding it. And that meant that when this current new strain appeared, there was quite a lot of understanding of the basic biology. Um, SARS-CoV-2, which is the new coronavirus, has a very similar structure to previous coronaviruses. And by understanding the biology and structure of that virus, we can start to look for ways to attack it. The virus has an outer membrane made up of fatty molecules, which scientists call lipids. Spike proteins float on this lipid membrane and provide the virus particle with the appearance of a crown, giving the coronavirus its name. Inside is a molecule of RNA, a chemical similar to DNA, on which the virus's genome is written. When the virus gets inside the body, the spike proteins link up with the proteins found on the surface of cells in the lungs' airways. This lets the virus break into the patient's cells. Inside, it releases the RNA that carries the virus's genes. Those genes hijack the cell's protein-making machinery to produce the building blocks for more virus particles. One specific gene, called replicase, provides the instructions to build a molecular machine that copies the virus's RNA, making enough for up to 1,000 new virus particles. The new particles are then released from the cell to attack other cells, spreading the virus. It's this replicase system that has become a focus for scientists searching for an effective treatment. The replicase system within the virus is actually a good target for disrupting how the virus works because healthy human cells don't actually copy RNA within them. So what you could do is if you could disrupt the replicase system in the virus, you'd hopefully destroy the virus without harming human cells. But developing a new drug from scratch that could do this and running the trials needed to ensure the drug is safe for humans could take months or even years. During a pandemic, every month you spend trying to do research, more people will potentially suffer or die. And so that's why there's a move to try and repurpose existing drugs. If you've already got a drug available for something else, you know that it's probably safe for humans, and so you can speed up the whole process. One of the drugs seen as most promising is called remdesivir. It was originally developed to treat Ebola by blocking the replicase system. It was found to be safe for humans, but was shelved in favour of a more effective treatment. The molecules in remdesivir look like the molecules that the replicase system uses to make RNA. When this drug gets into a cell, the virus tries to use the drug molecules to replicate, and then it basically doesn't work, so the virus doesn't manage to replicate properly. And there are other drugs on the market that scientists believe could also make it harder for the virus to replicate itself. There's also another drug called Coletra, which is used to treat HIV at the moment um, in combination with other therapies. It was tried um, during the original SARS outbreak uh, in 2003 and seemed to offer some benefits. What that does is target the enzymes that um, chop up big proteins into smaller proteins during the replication process of a virus. And so if you can disrupt that, perhaps that's another way to stop it from replicating within cells. Both Rendizavir and Collecture are now being tested as part of a global mega trial set up by the World Health Organization in March. The WHO study will also put the anti-malarial chloroquine to the test. President Donald Trump has built up a lot of hype around hydroxychloroquine, 
a similar drug which works in the same way. We're going to be able to make that drug available almost immediately. Based on what I see, it could be a game changer. But the president's enthusiasm is damagingly ill-informed. In the lab, it seems chloroquine may reduce the virus particle's ability to get into cells and to reproduce. But in patients, there is no strong evidence as yet that the drug can treat COVID-19. The WHO study should provide a definitive answer on chloroquine and the other drugs it's testing. What the World Health Organization is trying to do is speed up the process by just trialing more people. And that will hopefully allow them to pick up uh, even very marginal benefits of the drugs, uh, pick up very small side effects as well. And then using all of that information, it might just help these systems understand how to reduce the number of days someone is infected. Reducing the number of days someone is ill for can prove vitally important. Even very small differences in the length of time someone's ill um, can have enormous knock-on benefits for a health system. If you can knock five days off the amount of time someone needs to be in hospital or needs a ventilator, you can treat more people with the same number of ventilators, with the same number of doctors. An effective vaccine is the only definitive way to halt the spread of coronavirus. But while the world waits for that, repurposing existing drugs could help doctors treat it, allowing patients, health systems, and countries that are coming under intolerable strain to find a little respite. We're dedicated to bringing you the most up-to-date reporting and analysis on this rapidly changing story. So clicking on the link opposite will take you to all of our coronavirus coverage. Thank you for watching.